Here's the thing about RV modifications is number one, they don't need to be expensive to make an impact for RVing for you to be able to enjoy them. Number two, they don't have to be all that complicated. So today we're gonna look at a handful of our favorite RV modifications that we've done for a budget. So the first one is gonna be right over here. This might look like any other RV screen door, but the screening in here is reinforced. It's the, the pet screening that's in there. We do travel with a cat and in no time, just a, a claw or two to it. We had a hole in there already that mosquitoes could, it was like a highway for mosquitoes coming in. So we replaced it with the pet screening. We pulled the screen door down. You can pull out the ribbing and it's really easy to actually screen something like this. And now it's been holding up for a couple of years. There's a couple of other modifications you could do with the screen door if you didn't want to pull the screening out, but you do have a, a pet. They do have a screen defender that kind of pops into this lower section and protects that. I don't think that would work in our case because the cat seems to think that this is a raceway up rather than just taking the easy path on the stairs. This is the preferred route, climbing the screen and jumping over, even though we tried to train her not to. It's just a cat. One modification we haven't done to the screen door is adding the grab bar on the inside. Those are really simple, easy to be able to add on there, very cost effective. So that way it gives you something to open and close the screen door, something to kind of grab onto to do that. So I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to everything that we're talking about. I'll pin a comment in the first comment so you can find all the links to everything that we're talking about today. Cause the next one is one that we did from the get go. I've talked about it before. It's the thin shade window on the RV. That way we have a shade to be able to take down to put up so those times that you want to block out the light or you want a little light to come in you have that option it's just not a window that's always open for light or people to be able to look on the inside some people like to flip that around upside down and mount it so that you can close it going up rather than close it going down so that way you can close it partially and still see out but people can't necessarily see you on the inside so definitely options there we prefer the the top down but it's nice to have those options and if you didn't want to swap out the whole window for something like that. Some of them even have like a, a pop-in shade. That's why it made the, the budget list because if you have one that's already prepped for it, you just get it and pop it right in there. But if you didn't have one that was prepped, you can get a, a Velcro shade cover for there that you can flip up and you can have it either be partially open, partially closed, fully off, all those kind of things. So there's options depending on how far you want to dive into it if you wanted to be able to close that window off a little bit. As we move on to the next one, I have a quick question for you catologists out there. If I stand on the ground and I open the door and the cat is sitting on the stool, it meows at me. If I just come in the door, it doesn't meow. But if I'm standing here, open the door and look at it, she meows or chatters at me every time. I don't know. Now this next one, I have a couple of examples and it's adding custom light through anywhere you would like in the RV. So the nice part about that is really the, the sky's the limit. If you wanna put it in a pantry or in a cabinet or wherever you might like and a little extra light so it's easier to see, you can add extra lighting there. I wanted to stick with the 12 volt lighting and you can really make it as, as simple or as complex as you would like. So what we used is I got this roll of LED lighting, but I just didn't wanna have a strip of this LED lighting sitting on the bottom of our cabinet. So I got this track to be able to put it in. That's what it's designed for. So we mount the track on there and then it has this cover that goes on there. But right here over the dining table, the lights were just a little bit harsh. So we wanted to diffuse that a little bit. So what we did is we took shower curtain and we cut it on the inside of here. I use shower curtain to diffuse light for videos and stuff like that. And so I thought it's gonna work great in this application. So we cut a strip of it put it in the diffuser tinter that's already on here and we put it on there. This was really simple to wire up too because all of our switching is right in here for turning on the main lights in here. So we had our positive and our negative. And so really you can cut this strip. I'm sure you've seen this before. You can cut this strip anywhere that it gives you a, a seam joint and then you can solder on your positive and negative. Some of them even have clips that you can put on the end so you don't have to solder. This one even has an end where you can cut it off or you could use the plug at the end, but you can get to your positive and negative wire on the inside of this connection here. Having this light here with it diffused makes it great for using it with the table. The other light we have is over the range. Now this one is the same. We use the same lights, the same track. We, we like this track because it kind of blends into the cabinets. It kind of disappears. Uh, you can get white ones that are, you know, you can get them on Amazon. They're really simple just to mount on there, connect it to 12 volt power and you're done. 
uh, but I like the way that these just kind of disappear into the cabinets. So this one, we added a switch over here next to this light. So we can turn them off and on, really simple. That switch kind of hides underneath the, the cabinet over here. And having a, a light that has a switch on it already, you know that you already have a power source right there. There's nowhere there's switches to it. So we have 12 volt power right there. Made it real easy to put in the switch and put in this light but the shelf above it is a little bit of a mod too that I've had some questions about. Now we put the shelf in here because we got rid of the microwave. It's just something that we don't use. So we were able to have the tea kettle here and an air fryer. This isn't our favorite air fryer. We might be swapping this out, but the system, the way that we put it in here worked really well. So uh, we did put some feet that are attached to the shelf here. So it's like some of that nano tape underneath it. And these are like rubber feet that go underneath chairs so they don't scratch the floor. So I just cut those down a little bit, nano taped them down, and then this nestles right inside of there. Thousands of miles and we haven't had it move at all. So that, that system has worked well. We also installed a paper towel holder that has some tension on it. That way, when you're going down the road, you don't have your entire paper towel roll spool itself off. So the tension on there keeps everything on the roll as it should be as you're going down the road. We also had mini blinds here originally. So we put in some uh, deluxe blackout shades. That's what they call it. it, it blindster.com. These were purchased on a Black Friday deal, so they were significantly discounted, so we were able to get that for under $40. We got three of them, but e each one was around $40. When we pulled the old ones off, we have holes there from where the mini blinds were mounted. So uh, just a little tip there, you can use something like wood putty. You can get different colors. The one that we found that was similar, not exact, but at least you're not looking at a little black hole <laughs> inside of the wall. Uh, you can fill it in with a little bit of putty to to hide that hole. So if you're doing any modifications and you haven't painted the walls on the inside of the RV, a little colored putty can go a long way. In the bathroom here, we have a classic one, the Oxygenix shower head, super popular with RVers. We also did a shut off for the toilet. We have a dedicated video on actually doing that modification. And then we also have a vent cover for the one, especially in the bathroom here. We actually have vent covers for all the vents on the RV. But this one really in particular, because when you take a shower, you should have this open with the fan on to get that moisture out of the RV. No reason to let that moisture build up inside the RV. The last one, that I actually have to do tonight, it's on my task, is I'm going to be replacing the faucet in the bathroom here. So uh, the faucet that it came with is very plasticky, even though it's plastic on this one, the finish is starting to wear off and bubble. Uh, Full-time use, it just couldn't quite hold up over the years, so we're swapping it out for this one. New Delta faucet. One of my favorites are the wire shelves with the command hook supports. The one here in the bathroom, and then we have one in the bedroom as well. Now, right next to the nightstand, we put a USB wall charger. This is one that you don't have to plug into 120 power. So if you're just on battery, this is going to work off of 12 volt. So you can charge your phone. You can charge whatever USB device that you want to charge off of something like this. So we had the one that was kind of stuck in the middle of the bed and the, you have the wire that drapes down. But uh, we wanted to put this one over by the nightstand. We did cover up the light on the inside. We do like it dark in the, the room at night. So this one, we covered it up with electrical tape underneath it. It's pretty easy to take that top cover off. You, you need to do that anyways to be able to mount this. And we took these little doors off also so that you that way you don't have to fight those when you're wanting to charge and plug something in. So you, connecting these kind of things up is really simple. We used Wago connectors. So you have your positive and you have your negative. And we knew with this light here, since it has a switch directly on it, that there's constant power there all the time. So we use the Wago connectors to be able to tie into that and connect these wires in there and mount it to the wall. It's, it's really that simple. So that sums up a lot of our favorite modifications that we have on the RV that's $40, $50 and under that, that budget modification to the RV. So I'd love to hear from you guys what you have out there. What's a modification that you have really and thoroughly enjoyed, recommend to other people? Leave that down in the comments down below share that with other RVers. So I think that's going to do it for today. If you guys like this video, if it helped you out in any way, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.